Yo, what is happening, guys? Welcome back to the Unexpected Extra channel. And we're back for another reaction like that you never would have guessed. This time, we're going to be reacting to... I think it's the top 10... Top 10 or top 5 or something like that. It's a list regardless. This is the... Myth the most mythical creatures that actually existed. I'm going to be goddamn ashamed if I do not see a unicorn on this list. But yeah, uh, this is what we're going to be reacting to. We're going to see the most mythical creatures that I says. I don't really have much to say for this intro. Uh, aside, if you enjoy, smash like button. Check out my vlog channel for vlog content. Check out my gamer channel for gamer content. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the video. Hope you all are having an amazing day. And let's just jump right into it. Do, do, do. Let's go. Top five best. Son I... of Poseidon. Ugh. I used to date your daddy. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good story? Okay. Especially ones which involve unbelievable mythological creatures that you wouldn't uh... remotely think are real. But as history has proven, there is a basis for which these creatures were brought up. Today we're going to be looking at 10 mythical creatures that actually existed. Alright. Number one itself will make you question whether Middle Earth was real or not, so stay tuned for that one. With all that said and done, let's begin. Shall okay. We? Number What's, 10. Oh, it is top 10. The this dire. top 5 best, and it says uh, 10. The Dire Wolf. Okay. It's a freak. Do you know what? I'm gonna set my phone up against the glass so I can. When Game of Thrones hit the uh, I can just relax. These large wolves are a constant companion of the Starks in the show, and are shown to be large, intelligent, and protective. Okay. They are not, however, just merely a figment of George R.R. R. Martin's imagination. They are, in fact, based on Game real of Thrones. animals. Dire wolves lived during the Pleistocene, between 250,000 to roughly 10,000 years ago. They just look like giant dire skunks. wolves were not really the size of ponies. They were larger than modern wolves, though, and could weigh as much as 200 pounds, almost twice what a very large modern wolf might weigh. No, Those not the dog are much large compared to today's modern wolves. Ironically, though, their brains are much smaller. However, if they had bigger brains, we probably wouldn't have had amazing fossils of them. Thousands of dire wolf fossils That's have been found in the Labria tar pits. Scientists believe that they were trapped there when they started feeding on the carcasses of other animals trapped in the tar. Number nine. Okay. The unicorn. Yes! The earliest account of unicorns is by well-known Greek historian Satyr. Let's go! Who described a large animal with a horn on its forehead in India. It's quite possible that he saw a rhino from a distance and thought it was a horse with a <laughs> horn on its head. But fossils on Damn, that's Siberia a fat ass have proven the existence of this mythical creature. Called the Siberian Unicorn, it was 1.8 meters tall, over 4 meters long, and oh weighed my more God. than tons. It was covered in a shaggy coat and earned its nickname from the huge horn that grew out of its forehead. Yes, it doesn't exactly resemble the classic unicorn of lore, but so far this is the closest that we can get to a real one. They were believed to have died out 350,000 years ago. But the discovery of a fossil in Kazakhstan changed all that. Carbon dating tests revealed the fossil to be only 29,000 years old. This means that the animal roamed the Earth 321,000 years longer than previously thought. Number <laughs> 8. Okay, then. The Komodo Dragon. Oh, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This one's sick. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Believe it or Make not, the Komodo break, Dragon but it's was considered a mythical creature all the way up to 1910 when it was first discovered. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, rumors were spreading that eight-foot-long, hundred-pound prehistoric lizards were living on a remote Indonesian island. Okay. Wanting to prove or disprove the existence of these creatures himself, Dutch colonial officer Lieutenant Stein van Hensenbroek put together mustache. an expedition to Komodo Island. He was able to catch and kill a six-foot specimen, and he sent the carcass as proof to the Zoological Museum and Botanical Garden at Bogor, Java. Seemingly not satisfied with the discovery, American explorer W. Douglas Burton decided to put together an expedition. That looks so, like a scaly walrus from that specimens. angle. In the end, the expedition was able to pile several dead and two live Komodo dragons onto their steamer, and then return to New York City, giving scientists plenty to study and visitors of the Bronx Zoo plenty to see. I can't tell if our Komodo dragon was, uh... It was trying to kill the other one, or it was just trying to get a little something, something. Like, I, I can't tell, you know? Like, I, 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 I can't tell. I skipped to 322 by complete accident. But they're an expedition himself, making up his mind to catch live specimens. Okay. In the end, the expedition was able to pile several dead and two oh, see, I push it back. Their okay. steamer, oh. and then return to New York City, giving scientists plenty to study and visitors of the Bronx Zoo plenty to see. Number seven. Ugh. 
the Bunyip. The what? Bunyip is a little like Australia's Loch Ness Monster in that it lives in the water and has never been photographed despite ugly. the fact that hundreds of people have seen it. However, the legend might have had actual rational origins. The Bunyip is an aboriginal legend. According to Australian history, the name means devil or spirit, and the creature is said to look like a cross between a crocodile and a horse. Granted, though, a crocodile on a horse? Different. Bunyips stalk and kill human beings and supposedly make an eerie sound like a hollow boom, which certainly seems terrifying if you've never been around any shotguns or farm equipment. Most scientists believe that the Bunyip was derived from an extinct rhino-sized marsupial called the Diprodon. Remains of this animal were first found in the region of 1830. <laughs> okay. It's unlikely that there are any oh, surviving population Lord. of Diprodon in Australia, Looks like a giant lizard. but they only died about 20,000 to 40,000 years ago. This was long after the arrival of the aboriginal people. This suggests the legends might have come from real-life encounters between humans and these creatures. Number 6. The Gorilla. It's a What? <laughs> what? The shit said mythical creatures. We all know what gorilla it says. We've seen them in the zoo. We've seen King Kong. <laughs> No, we all know gorillas, it says, what are you being mythical? Like, what? Hard to imagine a world without gorillas, at least based on today's standards. Back then, tales of large, hairy, savage man beasts with bad tempers living in the wilds of some faraway place seems too good to be true. Their legend persevered until 1847 when physician and naturalist Thomas Savage managed to obtain gorilla bones, including a skull in Liberia. Prior to the first discovery of the bones, the first recorded sighting of a gorilla was made by the explorer Hanno in the 5th century BC. Another explorer named Andrew Battelle also told tales of human-like monsters visiting his campfire every morning after the humans had left for the day. But he also noted that these monsters weren't intelligent enough to put more wood on the campfire, so his credibility quickly went up <laughs> in flames. Oh, the gorillas went left unseen and untouched for a decade after Savage's discovery until explorer Paul Duchailu hunted live gorillas and sent specimens back to the many societies who were funding his expeditions. The subspecies mountain gorilla unbelievably remained a mythological creature for more than half a century more, only being discovered in 1902 by German... Oh, okay, so back then it was known as mythical until it got proven. I was about to say, I'm like, but we've all known it's existed for years, but... <laughs> The basilisk is what? a mythical creature born from a toad or serpent's egg incubated under a cockerel. The terrible offspring that hatches from this egg is a half bird, half snake, and all evil. It is one of the deadliest creatures to menace the mythological world, and is extremely hostile towards humans. You might be familiar with this monster from the Harry hmm. Potter book and movie, The Chamber I've... of Secrets. But the monster uh, no, I am not because I haven't watched it already. It appears as a giant serpent. The basilisk is sometimes described as a giant snake without the cockerel's head or wings. Still, its movement is unlike other snakes. Rather than slithering with its stomach on the ground, it crawls forward with the front half of its body towering above the earth. The monster's most famous weapon is its dreaded gaze. The potency of its gaze is discussed in all the myths that relate to him, across several different cultures. Okay. Sometimes they are also known to breathe out fire. Does the description vaguely remind you of something? Many have believe that the basilisk is none other than a cobra. From its size of the way it oh. stands erect when prepared, <laughs> he said fire, and I thought a dragon. The cobra's hood could be mistaken for wings, and the fire-breathing part. Well, we all know that certain species of cobras do spit out venom, and this venom does cause a burning sensation. So, yeah, there we go. The basilisk may be a misunderstood cobra, okay. or maybe it's another undiscovered creature. Who knows? Number four, mm, the okay. duck-billed platypus. Oh, I've, I've seen this. The rest of the world thinking that you're a hoax, but you know poses are weird, fam. Like, real. I don't if know don't why. Yourself long, they're just weird. The duck-billed platypus, however, had to spend most of its existence <laughs> mythological hearsay, or worse, a complete fabrication. First discovered in the 18th century, it was considered. <laughs> it literally like looks like you got like a wee leather money reason. pouch and just put this it over it for a nose. Like that's what it looks like. Sorts of strange creatures with the help of taxidermy and creative imaginations. It was first described by English zoologist George Shaw, who wrote that it resembled, and I quote, the beak of a duck and grafted on the head of a quadruped. All the fakery aside, the platypus is remarkable for many reasons, not just okay. its peculiar appearance. Naturalists could not determine whether the creature was a mammal. Did it lay eggs or give birth to live babies? It took another 100 years for scientists to discover the answer to that. As it turned out, the platypus is one of the very few mammal species to lay eggs, and is also poisonous. Ah. Fun. But platypuses are poisonous? 
the side. No, the side. Okay. What? What? Cyclops. In Greek mythology, the Cyclops what? were giant creatures that were unmistakable in their yep. appearance, sporting a single eye in the center of each of their mm -hmm. heads. They were also known for their barbarity, afraid of neither men nor gods. The most famous Cyclops was Polyphemus, which attacked Odysseus in a cave and ate half of his men. Odysseus blinded the Cyclops Shit, he's... a wooden stake through he got the munchies. Eye. Then Odysseus and his men escaped by tying themselves to the undersides of sheep. This sounds very impossible, though. Pertain to sheep yes. strong enough to carry the weight of a full-grown man. But the existence of Cyclops? Well, there might be some truth to that, actually. No, I don't For think so. For many years, there appeared to be solid proof that these one-eyed monsters really existed. Quite a few huge skulls were found, which appeared to have a single eye socket in the middle of their forehead. It turns out that the skulls belonged to the elephants. Dent. The eye socket was the central nasal cavity and the opening for the elephant's trunk. Many dwarf elephants have been there found in Cyprus, especially in caves where the Cyclops were supposed to have lived. Therefore, it's perhaps natural that an elephant skull would have been taken as evidence of a race of giant man-eating creatures with one eye and terrible table manners. Well, I highly now doubt time for the Cyclops assess. assess. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying, you know what I mean? And today, we're going to be taking a look at the creature who is the poster child for mythical creatures that turned out to be real. Find out what comes up next with... Is there actual proof for it, though? Because there's been a few here that you haven't proven. Okay. Release the Kraken! Originating oh, in North Folklore, the see. Kraken was said to be a powerful sea monster, strong enough to drag an entire ship... I mean, shit, see if this was real? ...gigantic tentacles around the vessel, or by swimming in circles around it to create a... You never know. ...that would drag the ship down. It was first written about in 1180, and there were many accounts of a gigantic tentacled sea monster dragging their ships to their doom. Jesus. The Kraken was said Imagine to be that was real, though. ship's crew in a single mouthful. The myths of the Kraken is likely to have arisen after sightings of a species of the giant squid. Also known by its scientific name, the Archichuthus ducks, which can grow to around 59 feet long, or possibly the colossal squid. Known by its scientific right. name as Mesokinethutis hamiltoni, which is significantly larger than the giant squid, it can grow to unknown lengths. Very few colossal squids have ever been found intact as they live in the deep waters of the Antarctic. For this reason, it has proved very difficult to find evidence of how squid attack their prey. Some recent research does show that they encircle prey with their tentacles before pulling it to them and eating it. So, you never know. I said the best for I actually have course. not said much during this video. I'm very sorry, but I'm just so indulged. If you can leave a like no. subscribe within the next Yeah, they're saying so you'll get like and subscribe to me. Five seconds. Yeah, if, it really works. if you like the video within the next 15 seconds, your dick will be 15 inches long. And if you're a woman, you will marry a man with a dick that is 15 inches long. But you gotta like it within the next 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Do you have a big dick? Who knows? Uh, hopefully you like the video and you'll wake up tomorrow with it. Or hopefully you'll meet a guy with a big dick next week. Then you burn. But if you didn't like the video within those 15 seconds, then uh, you're not getting them. So. Number 1. Hobbits. If you what? are even barely into pop culture, you'd know what a hobbit is. They're basically miniature humans who have furry feet and don't wear shoes. And hurry the dwarfs. Have a propensity to say the just hurry the dwarfs. Of jewelry, and also literally eat you out of house and home. What you might not know is the fact that actual hobbits did exist, but not quite the ones you've gotten used to. In 2003, archaeologists found the remains of a three-foot-tall adult female in a cave on an Indonesian island. At first, okay. there was speculation that the skeleton was a person with microencephalia. A comparison of the skull with modern microcephalics, though, seemed to suggest it came from a typical individual. There mm -hmm. were also other indications that these were the bones of an unknown species, such as extremely primitive feet, though scientists failed to determine if they were particularly hairy feet, which is a disappointment. Which mythical creature were you 100% sure wasn't real? Oh, that's it? Is okay. Comment section? I mean, well, that's the end of the video. Um, yeah, I didn't say much during that. I'm very sorry. I was so, like, engulged in it. As so we were talking about, like, a few, like, the platypus and all, I found that it was poisonous. They were talking about a few, I'm sorry I didn't uh, talk much about uh through that video, but yeah. I mean shit. I I still can't get over the fact that their gorilla was uh known as a mythical creature. But um yeah, no, uh I mean shit, they might be true. You never know. I mean I'm sure a lot of people believe in aliens. I believe that there's a different another life form. And part of the reason I have such a big fear of being lost at ocean, uh, lost at sea, is because you don't know what's in there. 
a lot of these animals he listed, there could be something very similar that could be in the ocean. That's why the ocean's so scary, Bob. Just saying. And if you believe in other life forms and other planets, well then, I mean, what's to say? These aren't real. They might be. Who, who knows? How, I don't know. You know You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I actually, I don't know what to say, bro. That was actually very surprising. But, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, smash like button, smash subscribe button. If you haven't yet already, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all have an amazing day. Hope you all are thinking positive and you all are testing negative. And, as always, I will see you in the next one. So, uh, peace. Fearless.